So what if I told you that I had an employee, a really awesome employee that you could hire today? Person's a self-starter, self-motivated. At one point, had 15 to 20 people working for him on a contractor basis. Managed every nickel that came through the company. In his first year, grossed a million bucks. Managed all the sales and all the marketing, all the business operations of that thing. Some of the wildest working conditions you could ever even imagine. Now let me ask you this. Who here would at least want to interview this person? If you were hired. Now let me ask you this. What if I told you I could, I could give you this person, you, you could hire this person tomorrow for 12 bucks an hour? Who here would hire him without even meeting him? <laughs> well, here's a kicker. This person's been convicted selling dope and went to jail, but now they're bouncing back. Now tell me, are you just as eager to hire that person? Do you have any reservations about hiring that person that you didn't have just a couple minutes ago? Now if you're being totally honest with me, I'll bet you, to, I'll bet you, you do. And that's the problem. And that's where the Trade Institute of Pittsburgh comes in. You know, at the Trade Institute of Pittsburgh, we take some of the most neglected, but some of the most talented people in this city and put simple tools in their hands and launch them into building trades, restoring our city. One of the things I think in society, man, we're all hung up on is words like convict and felon, you know? And I want to tell you, just take a minute and think about just how different that a convict or felon is from you or I. You know, I'm betting that most of us in this room right now, I'll bet we did something in the past that would have put you in jail. The thing about it is, you know, for each one of us, man, you look at this. It costs $43,000 a year to put somebody in jail per inmate. Now you think about that. You think about that $43,000 a year, now that's tax money that we're putting out to just keep one person in jail. Now let's look at what that money could be doing otherwise. You know, that money could be going to schools, could be going to community work, could be doing, going to all kinds of other really cool stuff around the city that could be better in our city. But you know, Bet now that you know that it costs forty-three thousand dollars, that you might just be a little bit ticked, knowing that you're paying forty-three k a year to keep somebody in jail. But you know, let's think now. Let's take a minute and think about that person that's actually the one that's being incarcerated or rehabilitated. You know. Not only are they locked up, but they're locked away 
from their families and their friends and their whole support system and everybody they love. And you know, I've seen this many times, man. I've had 10, like guys in, in the school, you know, they were doing 10 and 20 years. And while they were in there for that 10 and 20 years, they lost everybody they loved. And they came out of jail, and when they came out after that 10 or 20 years, they came out of jail, and they had nobody and nothing. And when I say nobody and nothing, I mean nobody and nothing. So could you imagine what that would be like? After doing the time you were supposed to do, and you come out, and you have absolutely zero support system. The thing is, I'll put it to you like this. A whole lot of times the case is, is all it was is, you know, they went to, they went to jail for 10 or 20 years because they made a mistake. And that's right, look at it, man. It says, it's, they made a mistake. And there's a whole lot of us here that have made mistakes. But you know, as a community, we can start looking at it like this now. And we can either keep, keep taking just millions and millions of dollars, and keep throwing it into a system that doesn't want to create any change, or we can help these great guys, young men and women, We can help these young men and women that have made mistakes get back on their feet and get down the road. So you ask me, you say, man, how do you do this? So I'll tell you something, what we do at the Trade Institute of Pittsburgh, we can take somebody from zero to a living wage in 90 days. You say, how do you, man, how do you, how do you turn, how do you turn all that, you know, how do you turn all that craziness around just in, in 90 days? Well, I'm gonna show you how. We give them a hand up, not a hand out, but we give them a hand up. And it starts with one of these. It's a very, very simple tool. It's a trial. You know, just like a lot of the students that come in and out of the, in and out of the school, man, they have, they're all different shapes and sizes these things come in, you know. This one here, this one's, this one's for laying brick. You know, I've worked with this for many years. Then you've got pointing trials that are used for restoration. Then you've got concrete trials that are used for finish work. And the really, really incredible thing is, and the thing that fascinates me more than anything is, man, is we have the graduates of the Trade Institute, man, to go out in the community, and they use trials like this to point and restore countless years, man, like really, really, like, like countless years of, of restoration. Like we got the, 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 the August Wilson house, up in the Hill District. And then, you know, then they restore other buildings like, you know, the generations before us started like down in, in, in where we are, we're located down in Homewood, where the school is. But you know, you, you, you look at it like this, you say, man, how, Steve, how, how, good, how good can they get in 10 weeks, man? What can you do with a guy in 10 weeks? How can you take a guy and really get him going in 10 weeks? Well, I'll tell you something, man. I'm gonna show you something here. Now, each one of these projects, each one of these projects was built by a student inside a 10-week masonry training course. And you 
asked me, he said, you know, it takes a long, long time to become a master craftsman or something. Yeah, I know. I do know. I've been in the trades for 40 years, and I mastered about five of them. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something, man. It's so incredible to see these young dudes and women. They come walking in there, man. You just put some simple tools in their hands, and you see the incredible talent. All it takes is some tools and some really simple materials and put them in their hands. It's absolutely incredible to see the talent that these guys have. But you know, there's something that you, you, you say, all right, Steve, all right, you get them through. Now they got a trade. Now they got a talent. And for most of us, you know, that, that's enough. That'd be enough. But you know, for them, coming out of jail, getting the tools in their hands and wanting to put their families back together and everything, you know, you say, man, you know, uh, what is, what is, they need a whole lot more than that. I'm going to give you three guesses what it is. What's the primary thing that you think these, these young men and women coming out of jail need? I'm going to give you three guesses. It's a job. It's a job. It's a job. You know, and then after they get, the thing is though, you know, to get that job, you got these little things, these little incidentals that they need, you know? You gotta have, you, you think about, we, we take all this stuff for granted every day that we, every day we do what we do. But you know, in order for them to get that job and secure that job and be able to perform in that job, you need housing, you need health care, you need food, you need transportation. And this is all the kind of stuff that we take for granted. So you ask me, you know what, man? You say, Steve, if this is so hard, man, why do we even bother? Well, I'll tell you why we bother. Because I'm going to tell you what, if you look around this city, you look around the city, man, you see all these tax delinquent properties all over the place. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of empty lots that aren't on a tax base. And we got need of 21,000 affordable housing units right now. You know, and there's just a huge need. There's a massive, massive need for people in the building trades today. You know, if we don't do something pretty quick, we're not only going to lose the buildings, but we're going to lose the people. And the really cool part about this is, man, is, you know, if we can pull together as one city and encourage, give them some simple tools. And you know, the wild thing is, is when I stop and think about this, man, you know, I don't care if you're, I, it doesn't, it, I don't care if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're black, white, male, female, I don't care, man. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, we need to pay the price, period, to make the changes that we need to make. You know, probably most of us in this place are dreamers. I know I'm one. And, but the thing is, is like we don't really, we really don't have to like rely on like warm fuzzy feelings to actually do something cool and help somebody out. Huh? But you know, one thing I want to go one step further, man. I want to show you 
that this isn't just about warm fuzzy feelings and about doing something like really cool for somebody, that this actually makes a whole lot of sense. And I'm gonna show you. So check this out. So the cost of incarceration, let's look at this. So if we take 10 people, let's take it like this first. We take 10 people, we lock them up for a year. Cost the taxpayers $430,000. Now that's forty-three thousand dollars a year. That's more than most. That's more than a lot. Of, a lot of households make. Now let's take that same ten people and let's lock them up for ten years. We just took that four hundred and thirty k times ten. We just turned that into four point three million dollars. That's for ten people. Now, check this out. We take $7,500 one time, put some tools in their hands, launch them into a construction trade, and what happens is, is over the years that they're working, Not only is it the savings of the 4.3 million, but now those same 10 guys, man, what happens is, is they, they're, they're generating taxes. So now that's $45,000 that's coming back. And now we're saving that 4.3 million because they're no longer in jail. So, you know, Let's talk about the human impact. Now the human impact, you see this is, the, this is one of the coolest things for me because one, once one of these guys really, these, these young men or women, because we've had four women come through, so it's men and women. So when they come through this, this training and they get on their feet, now we're breaking generational stuff, you know? We got the generational thing that we're breaking because they're getting it together and now the generations behind them are getting it together because a lot of these dudes, man, I'm telling you, their fathers and grandfathers and everybody ahead of them never did it. So now they're breaking that. So the human impact, man, you can't even measure it. But I'm telling you, the savings, it starts on day one. Now we're gonna go one step further. You know, as we build the city, as we build this city and keep building this city, there's a whole lot of these young men and women who are businessmen and women at heart. And you know what they need is all they need is to be having things. They need to have somebody standing behind them to channel the right resources and backing and everything to back them up. Because you can't tell me, I'm gonna tell you, you remember the dude I talked about at the beginning? <laughs> he was selling a million dollars a year in dope. And that's no joke. You can't tell me that guy can't run a small business or even a large one. <laughs> we just got to get it channeled in the right direction, doing things properly now. So, you know, if we can take all of us as fellow flawed human beings and we can work together rebuilding Pittsburgh, helping to rebuild some lives, everybody working together, man. 
it's really not that difficult. But I'm gonna ask you today, for anybody that you know that needs a first, or a second, or maybe even a third chance, that you would look past the fear and ignorance that's been created by media and simple myths. And I want you to know something, that fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. So I want, to, I want you to join with me today. And I want you to make a choice in putting your hand out so that the next bricklayer, electrician, carpenter, plumber, welder, can get that hand up that they need to put their lives back together in our communities. Thanks for being here.